this is Tim Pierce. This video kind of has three parts. There was the performance I did, which was super fun, kind of an updated version, uh, and I got to work out on the bass uh, using some really unique new pedals, the Fairfield Circuitry Shallow Water and the Hologram Electronics Infinite Jets, two favorites of mine, and me getting some infinite sustain from my uh, Line 6 Echo Park, which is an older one, a little bit of Echo Boy and Pro Tools, uh, and some reverb. But then... We go over to Dave Phillips at LA Sound Design, and he shows us how Andy Summers got the original sounds on the original Walking on the Moon. And then he also shows us a client pedal board, which I'll, I will always include when I head over there, and I'm gonna go over there on a regular basis. So it's three parts, this video is me having fun with that performance and kind of doing a modern version of Walking on the Moon with maybe the kind of effects that Andy Summers would use today. Then we go to Dave's and we recreate the old sounds and he has a lot of knowledge about how Andy Summers got those sounds. And then we look at one of his client pedal boards, which is always really, really interesting. Uh, thanks so much to LA Sound Design. That's Dave Phillips. Also LA Vintage Gear, his neighbor, which is Cliff Jones, which is where we get a lot of great stuff, including the telly we used. Also thanks to GNL for this terrific sounding ASAT guitar with Leo Fender's brilliant bridge and pickups that he invented after he left Fender and started his own new company. <laughs> Click the link below if you want to check out the online masterclass. We're up to over a thousand videos and over a hundred hours of lessons and content. So Dave, I walked in here and you had the sound going and you had set up this very special thing. You did a lot of work before I showed up. And we grabbed this from LA Vintage Gear next door. It's a downcaster. Um, you you felt that you tried five or six of these and you felt like this was the one that sounded most This seemed closest like to his 61 that he had. And okay. it was a Maple Neck 61 with binding and he had like a preamp built in it okay. with a humbucker in the neck. But right. this is the closest I found. So first we're plugged into a Dynacomp. What era is that? That is a late 70s Dynacomp, I would say around 79, okay. right before they transitioned between the script and the block logo. The script ones tended to be a little bit uh, mid-range, a little darker, and then the 80s ones in the 80s tend to get a little brighter and scooped, and I'm not a big fan of those, but I like these late 70s ones, and they have the little MXR logo embossed in the back, and that's how you can tell. I'll have to grab one of these before the word gets out. Sure. Oh, sure, well, the word's out. Right? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's next? The Electric Mistress. It's a 79. Probably around the same time as Andy got his. I think he got his in late 78, 79. Okay, so. What was the sound for the verse? Dry, just compression in the mist. Right, yeah. And cool. then and then we go into the Echoplex, which Andy used the tube version in EP2, but I have an EP3, which is solid state, which is very close, but the EP2 tended to be a little bit warmer, and that would be this. And you always use the slap, you know, that was Van Halen 2, slap. Uh, a lot of Andy Summer stuff had the slap. It was just like a, what is it, an eighth note? Yeah. Not necessarily in time. No, just just quick. Yeah, sympathetic yeah, to whatever yeah, yeah. the rhythm was. In the studio, from I'd say Zenyatta on, he went into a JC120. I didn't know that. Yeah. So they recorded the flanger into a chorus that's in the amp, so you have the chorus and the flanger at the same time on some songs. So that was that got later on on Ghost in the Machine, but early on it was just the mistress. It sounded like a chorus, but it was a flanger. And I remember those Roland Jazz choruses. That's how we got our clean sounds. Mm -hmm. We would bring in the Marshalls for all the dirty sounds, and then for clean sounds, JC 120s. Stereo wide, that chorus. Yeah, just yeah. amazing. And it, it gives this reverb texture, and I'm assuming because the police was a trio. Andy had to fill in the space. Yeah. 
because you know yeah. he that's why he used delays and chorus yeah. and, and these sus chords and add nines yeah. just to give it that texture yeah because like keyboard thin. pads exactly time. yeah well and with the Dynacomp it does kind of last forever like you hear overtones that just start ringing and blaring. It almost sounds like a harmonizer, but it's just, you know, a chord, yeah, you know, yeah. flanger in the... Right, it sounds like an even tide or something. And, and this is a precursor to the rack days, when you would get these kind of tones later yeah. on. Yeah. But early on, it was yeah. these guys were doing it like with pedals. Yeah, well, <laughs> I remember for me, the Holy Grail was the Boss CE1. Mm -hmm. When I moved here, everybody was buying a second amp trying to get a matched. I remember my friend had a pair of Mesa boogies and his CE1 chorus. But you had to you had to park them behind you so you could hear the stereo. Yeah. But otherwise it was didn't matter. You know, it's like yep. you needed to hear that rub. Mm -hmm. And wasn't one side bone dry and the other side was Correct. detuned? Yes. That was the other magical thing about it. So you'd have one dry, you know, cabinet and the other the other side was going e on e on e right? Yep. <laughs> Magical. Yep. Magical. I still have one in a rack, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was it was taken apart and put into a rack. I, yeah. I wish it was actually in the original box. And then in 1983, I think they gave Andy a CE2, and he had it on a synchronicity board. He was trying it out. That was, you know, it was like, oh, now we got a small version. Yeah. Of it. yeah. But originally, he started out with everything built into a Cornish board. Okay. And on the Cornish board was a um, a Phase 90 built in. Uh huh. MXR distortion. A MXR analog delay, which she used occasionally on like T in the Sahara and some other stuff, so Regatta to block the okay. real dark delays. Okay. And then also built in there was the Dynacomp and a, I think a fuzz tone, and then the Mistress, and that was all built into one. Was it one of those situations where they were all put into the board and they were just switched? They were gutted kind of, and yeah, put into yeah. the black box. So it's heavy duty for road work. Yes. Yeah. And what then he came out into the Echoplex yeah. and then for his Roland synthesizers, he went into the JC120s on stage and then the Marshall. I'm, in this case, I'm using a Marshall uh, blanket shift 50 watt plexi. Yeah. Similar, he used the late 70s underwater. Yeah. And was that Marshall set pretty clean? The, pretty clean. Yeah, yeah right. And yeah. then the distortion came from the pedal. Yeah. yeah. And, you you know, can hear that. And he only did solos occasionally. Yeah. He would kick yeah. on a fuzz tone. Yeah, and he had to cover the rhythm all the time, so... Pretty much. Yeah. basically the same set of effects, right? Pretty much. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. I mean, everything was was uh, Echoplex and Mistress, and then he started to add in some analog delay, and then he started to use two Echoplexes when he would do like polyrhythmic stuff. Okay. On Zinio well, yeah, he would have to manually set them. He would have to set them so they would be, one would be like a you know dotted eighth, and the other would be a longer one, and he would do them together. That's awesome. <laughs> Client. For a local client, and he's going for more of the vintage, old school 70s bluesy tones. 
So he's got analog delay, he's got some tremolos, got a fuzz, a univibe, Octavia, and then a, a gain pedal of the Blues Power. All these are made by Jesse Davey, these okay. three, yeah, and okay. they're very rich and lush and old school rock tones. So here's the Blues Power. <laughs> Simple, very organic. Uh, you know, that's what he designed it for. Can you a a exaggerate the analog delay and show me what that yeah, sounds like? Yeah, sure. a sound that inspires the part you'll play absolutely all the time all the time cool yeah. i mean it, it kind of it leads you to a certain kind of part that's mm -hmm. best suited for that sound yeah, yeah. absolutely <laughs> pedals actually add up nicely together. They cascade nicely. <laughs> what, what is the, the actual inspiration for that fuzz? It's a germanium fuzz and he built it, one, one thing I love about it is that it actually 
is one of the few fuzzes that you can power off a power supply and it doesn't mess it up. And he built it so that it's a vintage fuzz, a fat fuzz, and then also a, a zonk tone machine in the middle position, which is like a tone bender. So it kind of cuts through a little bit less spacey. <laughs> sound that it Circle. Yep. Exactly. Awesome, Dave. Thanks. You're welcome.